This week we have cybernetic enhancements, we have improvements for your shotgun, and we have... Well, we've got milk. Welcome to episode 12 of the Fallout 4 Mod Vault. The first mod I'm going to show you is called Cross Pre-War Cybernetics, and the easiest way to describe this mod is that it allows you to enhance your body with robotics. And actually, probably the easiest thing to do is to actually just show you what it does. The mod adds its own crafting station in the settlement menu. You can build these pretty much at any settlement as long as you have science rank one. You're probably also going to want to build an armor bench as well. In the crafting bench itself, you will see a number of different categories, including armature construction. That's probably the first one you will need to visit. And there are six items to create here. I'm going to create one of each. And once built, you equip them the same way as you equip any armor pieces. This does mean they cannot be worn with a lot of the suits of armor, anything that's bulky, but they can be worn with things like the Vault 111 suit. You've probably already noticed my hands have changed. The base items come with some small damage resistance, but it's nothing major. However, you now have the framework that you're going to use to create your cybernetic enhancements. Now you may have noticed this does resemble the power armor frame and it's actually a good way to think of this. You're turning your body into a self-contained power armor frame with which you can add further pieces. It's obviously a lot smaller than the power armor. If you want to improve this, and you're going to want to improve this, you do it at the armor workbench. Now, the first thing I'm going to improve is the upper lower connector. You can probably see, actually, if I exit the station again, you can see at my back, there is a spinal enhancement that is not connected to the legs. Obviously, that doesn't look very strong. So I am going to connect that. I'm gonna click on this and then change the unlinked spine to a linked spine. You can see, the support has suddenly appeared. It now looks like an exoskeleton. It actually looks like it really would support a lot of extra weight in your upper back. But obviously this is just the beginning. The, the armor itself or the cybernetic frame itself is not particularly strong at the moment. It's totally unmodified. So let's look at the torso. I can change the armor, which is the base light armor, to a variety of different things, medium combat, heavy combat, or even power plated. I'll show you, for example, the medium combat. And there we have the medium armor piece. My damage resistance has improved a little, but of course, it's going to be a lot better if I improve the entire suit. As you can see, I've got a lot more protection now. It's definitely looking a lot more like powered armor. And if I look at my damage resistance, it has gone up further. But of course, I can go even heavier. So here is the heavy combat version, which as you can see, is a lot heftier and gives a lot more protection. And if that's not enough, you have a power armor version, as you can see. Very similar to power armor, makes a lot more noise and is far bulkier. It's not as good protection as power armor, but it is pretty damned good. And you can actually mix and match, have a little heavy, have a little light. And if you want, you can even remove one of the items, if you so wish, so you can have one human arm plus one robotic arm, although you'll notice your hands are still robotic, which brings up another interesting little change. You can change the frame hands from robo versions to synth versions. You can actually have just one hand as a robotic version if you want, but I will show you. There you go. Robotic claw-like hands, very Terminator style, and it works in first person. Now, don't worry if you don't like the color or the material look for these items. You can actually change all of that. 
If you go along, I'll look at the torso, you can change both the paint and the color. So if I go along to paint, I'll pick something like fresh paint polished, which gives no wear, polished effect on metals, works best on darker colors. So I'm gonna pick that and then I will go for a palette. What should I pick? Well, you'll notice that along this side, it actually tells you what colors you have. And for example, this one on palette one and two, it gives white, brown, brown, but on palette V3, it gives purple and yellow. Now I've actually chosen a palette of V3. As you can see, there are different V numbers. So if I picked that one, it would be purple, yellow, and brown. I'm going to pick black, green, and red, this palette. And there you have the color scheme applied to all of the pieces. It doesn't really go with the vault suit, does it? A nice shiny chromatic version with slightly tamer colors. And of course, everything goes with black. So you have a lot of control over how this exoskeleton looks. In fact, you have way more options than I could possibly show in a single video. But of course, functionality is also important, and these cybernetic enhancements can be modified, much like your powered armor. You can look under each item to see things like gadget, spine implants, and uniframe mod, and in each slot you have a host of options. Many of them are going to be things you recognize, and they all can give you quite noticeable advantages. You can add firmware upgrade to your arms that will actually track visible arcs for thrown weapons, allow you to trivialize lock picking, leg enhancements that will let you actually carry more, and the list just keeps on going. Now, each implant mod has its own requirements. So for example, the bioelectric active camo mod requires rank two sneak and rank four in science, and each of these has its own need. Robotic skill, for example, is quite useful. Some of the mods need to be created in advance at the cybernetics lab, and this is where this section comes in. So I can go along to the mods arm firmware and create my mod there. Obviously, if you create the heaviest set and install all of the mods, this is going to be very powerful. I've not been able to play test this mod, so I can't tell you how it compares to, for example, a power armor run. It probably won't be as good in combat because you won't have the same damage resistance as you do in power armor, although still way above a lot of other armor. But with all of the mods, you're going to have a lot of advantages. Of course, it does require you have a lot of the relevant perks. You're going to need science, possibly robotics. And depending on the modifications, you may require a lot of other perks. As to how balanced, you're going to have to decide that for yourself. But either way, I have to say I'm very, very impressed with this mod. The amount of options, the amount of control you have is incredible. It was a lot of fun to play around with. And if you're going for a robotic, cybernetically enhanced playthrough, this mod is probably a must-have mod. Now, if you like the idea of some sort of robotic enhancement, but the last mod was a little over the top, you may be interested in a mod called Cybernetics Exoframe, a mod by the same mod author. It actually requires the previous mod, and once you've got this one installed as well, under Armature Construction, you will also have new options, Exoframe Lower Support and Upper Support. As with the previous mod, you just equip these as armor pieces and they will fit over any existing suit. When you first wear them, they will not be linked. So if you go along to the armor workbench and go to the variation unlinked and change it to linked, you will get, you can already see it appearing, the links that make it look like an exoskeleton, that make it look like it would actually support weight for you. And once done, this is what your exoskeleton will look like. It does add a little bit of a sound as you can hear, but it's nowhere near as heavy sounding as the last suit. The upper support actually has a lot of different options so that you can actually have no exoskeleton arms and have them linked or just one arm. So I will pick left arm linked. 
And when I come out, you will see only one of the arms is linked. This will, of course, allow you to mix and match with different pieces of armor or with the cybernetic enhancements from the last mod. As with the last mod, you can change the materials and the palette of both items to get a completely different look. I'm going to pick the clean chromatic to show you what that looks like. You can probably already see, even through the blur, it is a lot shinier and a lot more high-tech looking. And there you have the same material with some blue coloration to match my outfit better. There is very little in the way of damage resistance inherent in the exoskeleton itself, although you do get a point of strength and a point of endurance. You can, however, mix and match with either standard pieces of armor or, for example, pieces from the previous mod. So I will add the left arm and I'm going to add the cybernetic hands as well. So as you can see, I've got the left arm and cybernetic hands. In fact, I've only got one cybernetic hand. So you've got a lot of options with what you wear with this. But of course, the real reason for using this, apart from style, is the enhancements. And you get those the exact same way. You can see there are actually a lot less slots for these, so it's nowhere near as powerful. Well, that's probably going to appeal to quite a lot of people. But, for example, with the lower support, if you go to gadgets, you've got things like high-speed servos and load-bearing enhancements MK3. 100 carry weight, which is going to be a nice boost. As with the previous mod, a lot of these things are made over on the cybernetics bench. Fairly obviously, this mod is quite a lot less powerful than the previous one. It is far more understated, but it will probably lend itself better for more subtle yet cybernetically enhanced playthroughs. The next mod is anything but subtle. It's a mod called Quad Barrel Shotgun. And of course, judging by the title, it will come as a surprise to absolutely nobody that this mod allows us to change the barrel of our old friend, the double barrel shotgun, into a quad barrel shotgun. We have short quad barrel, we have the sawn off quad barrel, or even the long quad barrel. They pretty much all do the same thing as the short, long, and sawn off versions of the barrel, except this time you will have four barrels. This of course looks awesome and allows us to shoot four times before we have to reload. Now there is one small issue I have with the mod and that is that when you reload you still see two shells. Is that what you call them? Shotgun shells? You still see two shells in the barrels, not four. So two get ejected and you put two more in. It would be nice if that could be fixed. I, I'm not sure how hard it would be, but it is a little distracting when it happens. But apart from that, it's a great idea. And of course, it just begs the question, can we have an eight barreled shotgun, a 16 barreled shotgun, and so on? Why not go completely and utterly crazy? Now, I don't know if it's realistic, I really don't, I don't know if there's some reason why having four barrels like this would be a bad thing, um, and uh, I don't care, I really don't, <laughs> I love this, it's a lot of fun. Oh, I also don't care if you think it's a cheat mod, because it allows you to shoot four times instead of twice before reloading, really, just not caring at this point. Minor spoiler warning ahead. Please click the annotation to skip. Strength and power are no strangers to the super mutants of the Commonwealth, but one of them wants something more. Something he has heard gives humans immense power and immense strength. He wants the milk of human kindness? <laughs> Now, I'm not totally sure whether this is exactly what he had in mind, but it's a genius idea. It's absolutely perfect. I, <laughs> I saw this mod and could not stop laughing. Uh, surprisingly enough, 
The author has done a really good job with this armor set. It's actually pretty damned good. It's not just hilarious. It's actually fairly well put together. It, I was actually surprised how, well, how good it looks at the same time as looking completely insane. The thing is, as much as I know this is a joke mod, or at least I suspect it is, honestly, it could be a thing. It's, it's sort of almost in character with the Fallout universe that, that this might end up being <laughs> the thing that he was looking for, as, as nuts as that may seem. Um, I, I'm not totally sure I'd use it in my playthrough, but honestly, I, I tell you now, if, if this had actually been in the game from the start, for a, for a joke, for a laugh, I honestly wouldn't have been that surprised. I've seen sillier things. I've seen a lot sillier things. Which, all things considered, is really quite something to say. And that is all we have time for this week. I am going to be ending once more with some screenshots that you guys have been posting. They have been phenomenal to go through. There's been a lot of submissions and I'd like to thank all of you for what you've uploaded. They're, they're just brilliant. I will of course keep doing this and if you would like to submit your own screenshot, there will be a link down below to a video that shows you how you can do so. I will of course be back next week with more great mods to share with you and you are more than welcome to join me for that. I look forward to seeing you there and until then, remember as always, have fun. If you're curious as to whether I've covered a mod in one of my videos, feel free to go along to my website, gophersvids.com and check the search functionality out. Just type the name of the mod you're interested in, open up the settings and filter by mods only. Click for search and you will see whether or not I've covered that mod. Click on the mod and it will also show you any of the videos this mod appears in.